Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at uh, the autosomal DNA results of a Sarmatian from the Pontic Caspian steppe in southern Russia. It's a woman, as you can see, it's a, it's a female, doesn't have a Y chromosome, I mean doesn't have a, well, yeah, it doesn't have a Y chromosome and it doesn't have a Y haplogroup because of that. So, uh, for mitochondrial DNA, she's got mitochondrial DNA U4B, uh, I think I've I think I've heard somewhere that U4 is a hunter-gatherer, European hunter-gatherer haplogroup. I don't really know. Uh, I'm not an expert on, on mitochondrial DNA, but her mitochondrial DNA is U4B. And now let's move on to her phenotype. What does she look like? So she's got curly hair, according to my hair ID tool. Let's see how many SNPs this was done with. This was done with four, seven SNPs. So based on her genotypes in these seven SNPs, is there EDAR, I think... I don't remember, but I, I, I don't see EDAR here, so EDAR is not one of them. But based on her genotypes, it needs seven SNPs. She's got curly hair. Okay. Uh, now let's look at her eye shape predictor. She's predicted to have, what is it? Estonian eye shape, right? So Estonian is the biggest percentage, followed by Middle Eastern, followed by South Asian. Uh, so her eye shape is Estonian, and this looks, the percentages, they look like not a lot of SNPs were used in the calculation. Let's see. Uh, indeed, not indeed, not many, indeed, not many SNPs were used in the calculation. So this is done with, this is done with five, eleven. So this is done with only eleven SNPs, which is not, not a very um, reliable predictor. But it is what it is. Um, it is, it is what it is. That's the best we have so far. And now moving on to Nashakot. This is her predicted eye color. Uh, let's see, you know, the technicalities of her, her results. She's predicted to have brown color eyes, followed by hazel, uh, followed by green, followed by, it looks like, dark brown. And the last place, uh, the lowest likelihood for her is blue eyes, only 1% likelihood of blue eyes. Uh, she's predicted to have Greek-shaped nose, and it looks like brown or black hair, although black hair is slightly higher, the percentage for that is slightly higher. Uh, let's look at the stuff she was genotyped for. So she's she's got two light color variants here in SLC24E5, light skin. Uh, she's got two light color variants here in Keto G, once again, light skin. And she's got two light coloring variants here and here, once again, light skin. So she's got she's got light pigmentation of skin. We can make the assumption here, just looking at these results. Uh, you see something like this, you see 255, for example, for the result. That's because I don't initialize my variables. So every number you see here is a variable, right? And I don't initialize them, so I, I just kind of create them as you go through the as you go through the file. It creates the, these variables, right? And if you print something that's not initialized, if you print something that doesn't exist, it's gonna print something weird. It's gonna print stuff like 255 or like this. Uh, I'm thinking it prints a memory address. I'm not really entirely sure on what it, what these numbers are, but I think it's the memory address. And sometimes it prints zero in place where in place where it's simply not found. So uh, you have to be a little bit careful looking at these results. So for example, here it says it's zero, but I'm not sure. It doesn't, it shouldn't be zero because you're not supposed to have BH2 without BH1. Yeah, so she's got BH2, we know that for sure, but she's got zero here and she's got zero here as well. So I think one of them has to be, has to be just simply not found in the file. One of them has to be the case where it prints the memory address. Let's see actually on my, um, on my website, my web, my website checks for that. So, okay, wow, that's crazy. So she's got, does not have blue eye haplotype one. So this is actually accurate. Uh, this stuff, what we saw, what we saw right here, this is actually accurate. It was not the memory address. She does not have any light color variants here. That's interesting. And she also got uh, darker coloring CC genotype in this variation. So uh, this once again, this was also accurate. This was not the memory address. She simply doesn't have any light color vari variants here, which is kind of interesting. How does she have two light color variants here without any here or here? It's kind of surprising. You don't see that very often. Actually, you don't. This might be the first time I saw this. This might be the first time I'm encountering somebody with this kind of genotype. I've done a lot of videos, a lot of samples. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, in terms of in terms of the prediction, you know, the prediction is accurate. It takes everything into account. So the prediction takes all of this stuff into account. Everything that's on the screen, it takes all of that into account. 
and you know brown eyes is most likely what she has. Now let's see polygenic risk scores. She's got slightly above average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans, less less odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for Sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, she's got lower odds of type 2 diabetes than what's typical, and she's got two times less odds of Alzheimer's than what's typical. So she probably doesn't have type 2 diabetes or Alzheimer's or schizophrenia. What about these traits? Uh, GG here in Comet, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. AG here in DRD1, which leads to slightly higher likelihood of autism and tobacco addiction. And um, she's got short form 5 HTC LPR, just like most of you guys, slightly higher odds of depression, therefore. Uh, does not carry European lactose persistence mutation. GG here, which leads, uh, which means, actually, let me shift the screen. Two variants for higher levels of empathy, not a sociopath. Uh, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes. CC here, which means does not have he hemochromatosis. Uh, for Alzheimer's, no risk alleles here, no risk alleles here, nothing, no risk alleles in any of the Alzheimer's variations. Uh, for myopia, does not have the G allele which would protect her from myopia, so doesn't have the allele that protects against myopia. No micro P, no micro P. You know what micro P is, I'm not going to be spelling it out for you, it's not YouTube friendly. And I'm trying to get monetized and, you know, earn money, so I'm not going to pronounce these kinds of things. Uh, no fat gene variants in FTO, and lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, which might be relevant because Sarmatians, uh, I think they did smoke cannabis like for its psychoactive prop properties. Um, not a carrier for any of the albinism mutations, and well, this we, we see this. So let's check her ethnic calculator results. This is my very own ethnicity calculator that I, you know, made myself coded it entirely by myself and um, we're gonna see what she scores here with my ethnicity calculator uh, by the way it's for fr it's free you can get your coordinates for free but uh, the Oracle is gonna cost you you're gonna have to pay me um, two dollars to use the Oracle and she's closest to Iranian Neolithic farmers here uh, you know it's it's a cool it's a cool tool um, my calculator is a cool tool but uh, it's it's got its shortcomings, okay? Closest to Iranian Neolithic farmers, followed by Bimiak, followed by South Asians, followed by Afghans, followed by Indians, and actually, um, wait, where where's the um, Sarmatians? Sarmatians don't even show up here. Oh wait, sh here's their Sarmatians. Sarmatians are after Canaanites. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, now let's see um, mixed mode oracle. For the mixed mode oracle, she's getting more as a mixture of Iranian Neolithic farmer plus BMAG, plus Pinar Basi Hunter Gather. Very interesting result. <laughs> uh, you know, well, my calculator, uh, it only takes into account like 200 SNPs. Granted, it is the most important SNPs. Uh, they're from like Vero Gen or something. I I pulled them up from um, Snipper Free database for SNPs that have the strongest, the, the largest divergence between world populations. So they are important SNPs, they are, but it's only 200. It's 200 important SNPs compared to like Eurogenes, which looks at like 200,000 instead. <laughs> so uh, not, not the most uh, precise results. We're going to see what she scores with G25. With G25, she's closest to Tajiks, followed by Komi, followed by Tatars, um, followed by Bisermiania, which are a group of people in Udmurtia. Let's see if you know Greek people. She's, what she's going to score with the mixed mode oracle. With the mixed mode oracle, she's getting more or less a mixture of 52% Tajik plus 27% Komi plus 20.6% Finnish. So, uh, with the mixed mode oracle, she's basically half Tajik plus half North uh, Northeastern European. And we're going to check what she scores with this oracle uh, for the ancestral components, which would be Sintashta, uh, BMAC. Srubnaya and Krasnoyarsk Bronze Age, which is like Siberian. So, uh, with these components, she's getting more or less a mixture of 75% Sintashta, 15% BMAC, and 9.6% Siberian admixture. Pretty typical result for a Sarmatian. And let me actually show you what she scores with um, GD Match. Well, not quite GD Match, this is Admixture Studio, but this is Eurogenes K13 calculator that you will find on GD Match. And with this calculator, she scores a mixture of North Swedish plus Baloch. Uh, Thanks for watching my video until the end. I'm nearing the 10 minute mark. Um, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content. Goodbye. You can download the sample in 23andMe format from link.